It's day two of TBT 2019, and this is the chase for $2 million, winner take all. And we continue this unique three-week tournament today with competition from four regions here on ESPN. Here in Greensboro, we have a matchup of number five seed Florida TNT against the top seed Team Hines. And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in. Brock Bowling, Nate Ross with you. And Nate, four great games yesterday in the first round. Two more second round action today. Should be fun. Unbelievable basketball. And four teams are one step closer to $2 million. We start with the matchup of Florida TNT versus Team Hines today. And yesterday, Florida TNT's hero was Christopher Warren. Hit the game-winning shot. Chris Warren's made some big-time shots in the SEC at Ole Miss, but none bigger than that one right there. Put his team into the next round with a big time three in the Elam ending. On the other side, Matt Lajeski's four-time Greek League champion, knows how to make buckets. And you can see the numbers yesterday. Had a big game. They expect the same from him and more from his teammates. Let's take a look at the updated Greensboro bracket. Four games yesterday. The winners, Team Hines, won its game along with Florida TNT. They play each other coming up next here on ESPN3. Also later on tonight, it's the power of the paw, the three seed, against the two seed, Team CP3. Let's take a look at the rules for TBT 2019. A little different. Four nine-minute quarters in each game. A player is disqualified after he commits his sixth personal foul of the game. On the fifth foul of each quarter, all non-shooting fouls will be awarded double bonus free throws. FIBA goaltending rules in effect, which allows any player to make a play on the ball once it hits the rim, except on free throw tries. Timeouts, three 30-second timeouts, one 60-second timeout for each team. Two of the three 30s carry over into the second half of each game. And, of course, the Elam ending. First dead ball under four minutes to go in the game. The game clock shuts off. Shot clock still in effect. They set the team's score plus eight. Whichever team is leading, they add eight points to the total. That's the target score. First team to reach the target score wins the game. Time now for our starting lineups. Our starting lineups brought to you by Air Force Reserve. Explore your opportunities with the Air Force Reserve. There's the lineup for the Florida TNT squad. Selby, Holton, Griffin, Akun Purcell, and the hero yesterday for Florida TNT, Chris Warren. And for Team Hines, the starting five for the number one seed, Lejeski, James, Dunstan, Kalathis, and Kyle Hines, arguably the biggest American name playing right now over in the EuroLeague. And to look at our head coaches in this game, on the left for Florida TNT, Iron Rainey, and for Team Hines on the right, the head coach is 2002 Final Four Most Outstanding Player, Juan Dixon. So it was all chalk yesterday, Nate, except for Florida TNT. The five seed got by the four seed. Primetime players on the big shot by Warren. Now it's number five against number one here in the second round. Well, we figured four and five would be the best game, and it turned out to be a great one. And uh, when you're seeding teams four and five, it's probably not much of a difference. But as you said, number five beat number four. Everybody else, the leaders, everybody's one step closer to the big $2 million. And now it gets even more serious than it was. Eric Griffin jumping center circle for Florida TNT, the five seed. Bryant Dunstan jumping in the center circle for Team Hines, the one seed. Referee in the center circle. Opening tap, and here we go as Florida TNT has the opening possession of the game. And they nearly turn it over, Josh Selby. You know, redirect traffic on the point for Florida TNT. It's called Florida TNT because head coach Iron Rainey feels like, well, TNT stands for dynamite, and he feels his team is rather dynamic. Last year it was called Team DRC. This year it's called Florida TNT, and Eric Griffin with a fadeaway jumper scores the game's first two. It's an impossible shot to block when he's that big and that long and fades away. Kyle Hines not as big, did all he could do. Now Team Hines with his first possession, and Kyle Hines missing inside. Put back try missed by Dunstan, and the rebound to Florida TNT. Akun Purcell, tough shot, and the loose ball taken by Mike James of Team Hines. It's called Team Hines due to the Hines brothers. Star player Kyle Hines, number 42, in white for Team Hines, and his brother is Tyler Hines, an assistant coach on the team. 
Brian Dunstan scores inside and ties the game at two. Not a good start for Team Hines yesterday. A little better today, obviously, tied up early. Yeah, Team Hines yesterday out to a slow start, down as many as eight points, down one at halftime to the eight seed, Boo Williams. A little better start here today. There's a bad pass, and it's taken back by Florida TNT. Hines tried to get a defender on his back, and he did. It just threw the pass a little too far. And Griffin draws the contact. Foul called on Team Hines, I believe on Kyle Hines. And Griffin will head of the line to shoot two. You can see right from the get-go, Brock, Florida TNT is attacking the basket. First little post-up fadeaway, and everything's going slashing to the basket, not settling for jumpers. They realize they're playing the number one seed and want to get a lead because they realize Team Hines didn't have a good start yesterday. So Eric Griffin at the line. Foul by the way on Bryant Dunstan, his first. And first free throw missed by Eric Griffin. If Eric Griffin and his team wins the TBT, he will take home $100,000. That's if Florida TNT wins this year's TBT. His winning share will be sent with Zell. Second shot for Griffin, and he rims it in there. Makes one of two. That's his third point of the game. He has all three Florida TNT points early in this one. Kalathis inside pass. Lajeski on the lay-in. I read a lot about Nick Kalathis. What a great passer he was. Rick Patino said he's the greatest passer he's ever seen. He's shown some great vision and great passes in the one game and one quarter we've seen so far. Griffin rims out the three. Mike James the rebound for Team Hines. Little acrobatic move inside, missing the shot, and the rebound ripped away by Griffin. He's been very active on both ends of the floor early in this game. Here's Devon Akun Purcell. Arguably one of the best players on this Florida TNT team. There's Christopher Warren, the hero in the Elam ending last night. And missing badly on that three. It's out of bounds to Team Hines. Chris Warren was three for eight in threes last night, but that third one was the game winner. So if you're a shooter, you have a mentality of don't worry about the last one, make the next one. Lajeski with a big three from the left corner. He hit five threes yesterday. That's his first trade of the night, his second basket, fifth point. If you want to be a great deep maker, not shooter, maker, watch Matt Lajeski's feet. They're never, this is lousy English, but it makes my point. They're never not square. He's always squared up. Christopher Warren from downtown nails a three. He was the hero last night at the end of the Elam ending. That's his first points of this game. Lejeski from the top, a deep three, and it goes down for Lejeski. Back-to-back threes for Matt Lejeski, and Team Hines leads it by four. Four-time Greek League champ. That Euro basket ball line is a lot further back than this one, and he can make them from deep. Matt Lejeski. Played the last 12 years over in Belgium and Greece. Always squared up, pivots on the left foot. Perfect, perfect execution. As Kevin Capers, new player to the ball game for Florida TNT, inbounds the basketball. Warren, a deep three, count it! Exactly what I'm talking about. Great athletes have lousy memories. Chris Warren just missed one badly before that. But he's a maker. He put up the next one, bingo. Now Team Hines with the ball. It's made four of its last five shots from the field. James inside, underneath to Dunstan. Can't finish the layup. Fight for the rebound. It's out of bounds. It'll stay with Team Hines underneath. Big man for Team Hines. Dunstan's having a tough time holding the basketball. He's around it all the time. He's got to grab the ball. And a steal by Jonathan Holton of Florida TNT. Turnover on Team Hines. Devon Akun Purcell with the floater. Tap try up and in by Holton. TNT has its lead back of one point by a score of 11 to 10. Dunstan fighting for position against Devon Akun Purcell. Big reverse layup attempt is missed, but he's fouled. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Didn't make the shot, but I love the aggressiveness. He couldn't handle the previous time down the floor of the basketball, lost it, and this time he just said, I'm going to the rack. Got hammered, going to take a couple from the line. Big man, Brian Dunstan out of Fordham. Yeah, he 
played four years at Fordham, 2004 to 2008. He had four points in yesterday's game and the win over Boo Williams. That's his third point of this game. He played 120 games in college. Talk about being there every night to perform 120 games in four years. It's impressive. Two for two. Big man makes free throws. That's an asset to any basketball team. And Team Hines reclaims the lead by one at 12 to 11. Near steal by James. Griffin got it back. Warren, he'll crank up a three and knocks it down. Three threes in the game for Christopher Warren, and it's 14-12. Florida TNT with the lead, and a steal by Warren as well. Capers open for the three. Kevin Capers from outside knocks down a deep three. Timeout taken by Team Hines with 4.26 to go in the opening quarter. Timeout taken. 4.26 to go in the opening frame. Kevin Capers with a huge three. Florida TNT leads it by five. My name is Chantal Navarro, and I want to be number one in the nation. When she was younger, she told me, Dad, I want to box. From day one, I've always told her, look, the mind is a powerful thing. If you focus and you're determined, you will always accomplish any goal. I get excited knowing that I'm here every day, knowing that I'm consistent. I want this to be my future. The biggest change that I see is her discipline. Everything that she has learned from boxing is gonna transition into her life. Boxing's always taught me to be humble. We have to think of all of the stuff you sacrificed the times you ran when you didn't want to run, the times you've pushed yourself. Take all of that and build your legacy. I'm gonna show them who Chantal Navarro is. The basketball tournament is brought to you by Puma. Back in Greensboro, Brock Bowling, Nate Ross with you. Florida TNT currently on a 6-0 run. Christopher Warren, Nate, has scored or assisted on 12 of Florida TNT's last 14 points. Just continuing the way he ended the game with the great shot in the Elam ending to put his team in the next round. It's got to help your confidence, and now the rest of his team is going along with him. Foul on Warren there for putting a hand on the dribbler. Yeah, it's actually away from the ball. It's on Kevin Capers. Play for Coach Andy Kennedy at the University of Mississippi. Talked to him about it before the game. He goes, AK's my man. <laughs> Andy Kennedy, great coach there at Old Miss. Here's Lejeski. 25 points last night, including five three-pointers made. He's already made a couple of threes in this game. That ball goes out of bounds. Turnover on Team Hines, number three in the game. And that's the reason Capers was in his face when Lejeski touched the ball. I'm sure they talked about it at the timeout. He can make threes. He did it last night. He's made a couple today. Let's get in his face, and they did. Force him to put it on the floor, do something else. Boone Purcell trying to reset the offense here on the wing. He'll rise and fire a three. Banks it in to Vaughn Akun Purcell. The bank is open on Saturday night. Switched on the screen. He just got lucky on the bounce. Here's Lido for Team Hines inside White. Got clobbered on the shot. He's fouled. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Lido just in the game, was wide open for three, but doesn't want to take a three. Smart play. Attack the basket, find your teammate. There's a man that's been on fire from the last shot of the last game to today. Three of four, nine big ones. First point of the game for Aaron White. Team Hines, the one seed, coming off yesterday's 89-78 win. 
against the eight seed Boo Williams. Got out to a slow start, but a much better finish. And the one seed advanced to today's game in the second round against this team, Florida TNT, the five seed, which knocked off the four seed primetime players. The great game in the opener yesterday afternoon. Warren mm -hmm. needs help. So Juan Dixon, he was closer to Chris Warren than Kyle Hines, the defender was. He said, get out and get in his face. Don't let him get an open three. Finger roll layup is good by a Devon Akun Purcell. Former Denver Nugget, young man's got a big basketball body and great skills to go with it. White, little Kevin McHale move inside. Got his own rebound, shot clock resets to 20. He hit the back heel and came right to him. Lido, and he traveled. It's the fourth turnover on Team Hines. So Florida TNT with the ball. Started out shooting just three of nine from the floor. Since then, it's gone five of five. Now make it five of six as Holton misses that three and the rebound of the back end by James for Team Hines. Nice pass inside to Kyle Hines. Lost the ball. It's out of bounds. And who touched it last? They say touched last by Florida TNT. Mike James coming down the floor there. His head was up looking for somebody to throw it to. He got it to Hines, but Florida TNT got a hand on it, but they keep possession. Coming up after this game on ESPN3, the two-seed Team CP3 takes on the three-seed Power of the Paw at about 7 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN3. Kyle Hines inside lays it in. He's so efficient inside. I got back after all the games, and I'm looking at the box scores uh, late last night. And he had a double-double, I didn't even realize it. Griffin, no on that three. I say a Miles skies high for the rebound for Team Hines. Here's James, caught in the air in traffic. Up top to Miles, high arcing three. White crashing the offensive rebound for Team Hines. The shot clock resets to 20. White. And he runs into a man and he's fouled by Keon Palmer of Florida TNT. That's his first. Palmer coming down to help. He just, White just ran into him. So Kyle Hines goes out of the game. Joey Dorsey, who played his college ball at Memphis in the game. Here's Hines against Warren. Make it out. James, I should say. Tough, high arcing shot and a foul on the rebound. Looks like it's on Eric Griffin. That's his first. Good call. He took uh, the man who was trying to get the ball, Dorsey, and just shoved him out of the way with both hands right in front of the official. Can't do that. A correction, that's his second for Eric Griffin. At the line, Joey Dorsey played four years for John Calipari at Memphis, 2004 to 2008. Went to the final four, all the way to the national title game in his senior season in 2008. Played in Greece this past season overseas. And one of two for Dorsey. Well, Team Hines has awakened, uh, I think. They didn't start well, but they're coming back into this thing. They just not have, has not, they have not had a good start in the first two games. Warren on the drive, lost the ball, picked up by Holton, back to Warren. Here's a three. No, it won't stay down wow. for him. And the rebound by Miles for Hines. And here is Mike James, and he lost it out of bounds. He thought Chris Warren hit it, or he's a really good actor, one or the other. That's the fifth turnover on Team Hines in this game of the first quarter. Florida TNT is yet to give up the basketball. Here comes a guy into the game that's got to have a good game. He did not, Nick Kalatha, did not yesterday, shot the ball terribly, had seven assists, which helps his team, but he's a really good player. He needs to have a little spark, or get a little spark going for this basketball team, number 33 in white. Peppers on the drive, lost it, got it back, and scores. Fender hit it, but Peppers never had control of the ball, so it's not a travel. 
Florida to TNT, leads it by seven. White double teamed, here's Miles, that's his shot. Comes up empty, Dorsey, big rebound inside to White. Good job by Dorsey, he was almost losing his balance and he knew he had his teammate White next to him for an easy layup. That's the big to big passing, nice. First basket for White, his fourth point of the game and a reach in foul called on Florida TNT. Dorsey gets this ball on the miss. Watch Dorsey with the offensive board. He almost loses his balance, but he knows he's got his teammate right behind him. He goes one way, the ball goes the other way, and the defense follows the dribbler. Excellent job. About a nine second differential, shot clock to game clock. Here in the first quarter. Akun Purcell with a deep three, and the rebound snagged away by Isaiah Miles, 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Calathis needs help, finds Lido, five seconds to go. Lido, Calathis, wide open three at the buzzer, no, and that's the end of the first quarter of play. At the end of one, here in day two of the 2019 TBT Greensboro Regional, it's Florida TNT with the early lead, leading 24-19. I'm Justin Gallegos. I started running my freshman year of high school. It really made me a stronger person and really improved my quality of life. At first it started as something I wanted to say I did, but eventually it turned into me wanting to set this record. It doesn't matter that he has cerebral palsy. He's going to do what he wants to do and run 13.1 miles in two hours. So he's saying, I'm no different. I can do this. Anybody else can too. I believe this is more than a record. It's a change people's perspective on awareness. TBT is taking over Chicago for championship week. Eight teams, single elimination, two million dollars, winner take all. August 1st through the 6th at Win Trust Arena. Visit thetournament.com slash tickets to secure your seats today. Round one games of the basketball tournament 2019 continues next weekend here on the ESPN family of networks in places like Salt Lake City, Utah, Wichita, Kansas, Syracuse, New York, and Richmond, Virginia. So four sites this weekend, four more sites next weekend. First and second and third round action here on the ESPN Family of Networks, TBT 2019. Here's Devon Akun Purcell, finds a wide open, Brangers, open three, no. Fight for the rebound, Kalathis has it for Team Hines. Oh, nice bounce pass up the floor to White, missing the shot, got clobbered from behind. He's fouled, he'll head of the line for two shots. How about that pass, Nate, from Nick Kalathis? It's about a 60-foot bounce pass, White flying down the middle, watch. Nick Kalathis, one, two, three, and then boom, right down the middle. Great play to catch up with the foul. <laughs> that was big time good. Oh my goodness, that was fun to watch. You run, you'll get the basketball, Nick Kalathis will find you. And Aaron White to the line, he'll take home $120,000 if Team Hines wins this year's TBT. His winning share will be sent with Zell. And I'd love to play with Nick Calathis on the floor. Just run and get open. You'll get the ball. And you mentioned it, what Rick Patino said, that Nick Calathis is the best passer he's ever coached, he's ever seen. And that's one reason right there on the previous possession. Another offensive rebound for Florida TNT. Long shots, long rebounds. You got to block out. If you get between you, excuse me, if you put your body between the shooter and the rim, you'll get either of those rebounds. Cooper Cell can't finish the layup. Rebound by Team Hines. Here's Ricky Lito. 
Shot for three. And that's good by Ricky Lito, his first points of the night. And all of a sudden, a 7-0 run. And Team Hines has tied the game at 24. I love that basket. Bring seven. When Lito came in the game, he didn't take it over three. He moved the basketball. Now he's put him down a couple times in rhythm. Bingo for a three. Let's go real inside quick. the huddle. The sights and sounds from this huddle are brought to you by Puma. Guys, if we're guarding the ball, we hit, and he goes through, the ball is here. Guys, don't chase your man all the way through, and we go stand right next to him. Guys, we got it. empty out and get the basket, guys. We got to shrink the floor. Hey. It's too much chasing our man. Right, and guys, the half moon, guys, it's long rebound. The half moon, don't go underneath the basket. Come on, let's go. Let's go. We're going three. One, two, three. Hey. We're ready. Coaching from head coach Juan Dixon, the head man of Team Hines. You heard what he said there, long shots don't go under the basket, stay by the half moon, meaning the three-point line. It's going to come back to you. They got lucky that two shots were not defensive rebound, and Fuller the TNT got him, and then that last one by Lito paid it off. Great, great player for the University of Maryland. National Championship, and now the coach of Coppin State. There he is right there. Yep. Two Final Fours, back-to-back -back years, 2001-2002, with Coach Gary Williams at Maryland, national champion in 2002, most outstanding player as well in that 2 season. All-time leading scorer for the Terps, who, in my opinion, should still be in the ACC, but it wasn't my decision. <laughs> I'm still upset about it, but it wasn't my decision. Cleaning up the floor in front of Florida TNT's bench. Nice little spurt there by Team Hines. They woke up. First quarter has not been good to them in the first two games, but means nothing now. As you can see, tied to 24. Jamie Lucky doing a little housekeeping so everybody's healthy and not dangerously slipping. And here we go. if they listen to Coach Dixon on the long threes as far as rebounding. So Florida TNT once had a seven-point advantage. It's largest of the game early in this one. Since then, it has gone five minutes with only one made basket. The Cooper Cell, Griffin for three. And Lito gets the rebound for Team Hines. Trying to reclaim the lead. Lido on the attack and lays it in. His second basket of the game. He has five points, and Team Hines leads it 26-24, a 9-0 run by the number one seed. Ricky Lido got loose. Ricky Lido started scoring. Holton lost it and taken away by Nick Kalathis. First turnover on Florida TNT, and then Kalathis turns it right back over to Florida. That's now seven TOs on Team Hines. Uh, that's Nick Kalathis' turnover. That's not his fault, though. Lito's got to run. He slowed down thinking they didn't have numbers, but I'm telling you, run lanes. Nick Kalathis going to put the ball out there for you. Warren, high arcing three. White clears the rebound defensively for Team Hines. Here's Kalathis. Good job by James to get in the shooter's face and not give him an open one. Kalathis uh, short on that three. Holton rebounds for Florida TNT. A Cooper Cell. Oh, nice pass inside to Griffin. He's fouled by Dorsey. First time in a while, Florida TNT's attacked the basket instead of settling for a deep one. Kalath is walking towards us. He's really upset. He hadn't made a shot yet. Here's Eric Griffin at the line. Had 19 points, seven rebounds in yesterday's win over the primetime players. Has three points today so far. Make it four. Getting back to Kalath. It's 0 for 2 today, 1 for 9 yesterday. So he's having his shooting problems. But he had a ton of assists, seven of them in the last game. Griffin played two years of junior college basketball in Kansas and then spent two years down the road in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina at Campbell University. Two for two. TNT, three of four at the line. Tie game at 26 as Devon Akun Purcell goes out of the game and Darius Clark, who did not play yesterday for Florida TNT, is in there. Ali Uplav to James! My man, Nick, what a pass. 
That's great communication between James and Calathus to know that ball's coming. Well, they are not giving Chris Warren an open look. Selby needs help. He finds Warren. It's like if he's not your man, it doesn't matter. Somebody get out there in Warren's face. Griffin draws an immediate triple team. He needs help. No, he doesn't. Tap try missed by Holton. Rebound by Team Hines and James. Here's Calathus. Missed the shot inside Dorsey. Blocked by Holton. Taken away by Warren. And TNT has numbers. Griffin took an extra step and he travels. Nick Calathus knows where his teammates are and they communicate. Look at James, top of your picture, left side. He knew it was coming. Boy, that's really good communication. Great pass, better catch, spectacular finish. So Team Hines, the number one seed. Slow start yesterday, slow start today, playing much better. In this game, just like yesterday, as the games unfold. Dunstan, left hand, no. Rebound TNT. Clark, quick shoot three, good. That's TNT's first made field goal of this quarter. James on the runner in the lane, can't answer. Rebound Clark, who just hit a three a moment ago for Florida TNT. He's picked up by Ricky Lito. Inside five minutes to go in the second quarter. Warren, quick step, can't finish the layup, and the rebound by Kyle Hines for Team Hines. James, his pass deflected, turned it over. Eight turnovers on Hines, up the floor is Clark. He'll drive inside for the lay-in, got fouled. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Mike James with an ill-advised pass there to Kyle Hines. And we got a technical foul on number one, Ricky Lita. what Lito said, but early in the game, he went in for a layup and got hit in the eye, and they didn't get the call, and he kept complaining about it. And I'm sure it wasn't about that, but he was probably frustrated about that from that point. And Warren goes two for two on the technical free throws. Not surprised by that. And now Darius Clark will shoot the regular free throws after being fouled by Ricky Lito. Clark did not play in yesterday's game in the win over the primetime players. The tournament.com is your place for all things TBT. Check it out, especially TBT's week two regional competition from Wichita, Salt Lake City, Richmond, and Syracuse beginning this coming Thursday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Florida TNT on a 6-0 run, leads it by four. And double dribble on Nick Calathus. He's saying that when he went through that screen, somebody got a hand on the ball with a red shirt on. Jamie Lucky disagrees. Comes off the screen. Did, nah, he just lost it. That's a good call. I thought Holton might have hit it too, but he didn't. Jamie Lucky's not going to get too many of them wrong. Here's Selby. Warren, wide open, three, no. Rebound by Mike James. Lejeski. Kalathis. The runner goes in. Pretty good fast break there. Two passes for a layup. Sideline break works all the time. The defense gets back to the rim. They don't get out to the edges to guard. That's the first two points in this game by Calathis. Two tries missed inside by Florida TNT. Reach in foul called on Josh Selby for Florida TNT. And that's his first. And a timeout on the floor. We'll take it as well with 3.43 to go in the second quarter. Nick Calathis with the runner lays it in. His first two points in the game. Wow, we did it. We built the fastest network for the latest iPhone. And the iPhone XR with a retina display that makes everything look incredible. It's like the perfect couple. You know the ones who look great in every picture? Like the ones who always make me feel like a before photo. Zoe, Zoe and Chris. Chris. Hey, guys. Hey guys.
Hey, Zoe and Chris. <laughs> All right. How fun is that? Yeah. AT&T has the fastest network for the latest iPhone. Get the mind-blowing iPhone XR on us when you buy the latest iPhone. AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. You'll see some of the most original and colorful TBT uniforms this tournament, so be sure to check them all out over at tbtgear.com and treat yourself to some great-looking TBT apparel. Brock Bowling, Nate Ross with you. Second round action, Greensboro Regional 2019 TBT here from the Fieldhouse in Greensboro, North Carolina. And the five seed, Florida TNT in red, leading top seed Team Hines 32 to 30. I like Nick Clay to set the point. First of all, he's 6'5". We've seen his prowess in passing the ball, but he's just big. You can see over everybody. Dunstan, uh, partially blocked by Griffin into the hands of Kyle Hines. He got fouled. He'll head to the line, and he'll shoot two. Show you the respect Kyle Hines has on that deflected ball that was uh, uh, blocked. Three red shirts around 42 in the white when he caught it underneath the basket. They're not going to let him get a shot off. Kyle Hines played collegiately right here in Greensboro at UNC Greensboro, the school's all-time leading scorer as he scores his third point of the game. In fact, he's one of six players in NCAA history with over 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 300 blocks in his career. The other five, pretty good company, David Robinson, Alonzo Mourning, Purvis Ellison, Tim Duncan, and Derek Coleman. Yeah, I think I've heard of a couple of them. And then he's gone overseas and won four Euro championships in a row, so uh, not bad. Akun Purcell with the leaner. No, won't stay in. Rebound Kyle Hines for Team Hines. Here's Kalathis and a reach-in foul committed by Kevin Capers of Florida TNT. And that's his second. Kalathis is the complete package, two-time Florida, Mr. Basketball. Sometimes he throws a 60-foot pass, and on that time he tried to blow by people and they had to grab him. He just, he knows the pace of the game and knows how to change it. Hines contact, draws the foul, and the basket goes as well. That's a really smart play by Kyle Hines right there. He had Jarvis Williams, the defender, in a bad position. Watch how he just bumps into him. He'll run into the defender, and then he's got the strength to not even bother the shot. That's very, very intelligent post-basketball play. Can't convert the three-point play. Rebound, Florida TNT. Capers, a three. Fight for the rebound. Griffin has it offensively for Florida. Inside against Hines, tough shot. Count the basket and one. Oh, he earned that one as he was a workhorse inside and drops it in for two. Well, Hines, 6'6". Six, six. Eric Griffin, 6'9", with long arms. Kyle Hines does all he can do, and he goes up against him very awkwardly, but he's just got the long arms, and he's just bigger inside. Not necessarily stronger, but bigger. Chance for that one. 19 points, seven rebounds last night, seven points so far here tonight. And can't convert on the three-point opportunity. Our next game tonight after this one, 7 o'clock Eastern, Team CP3 against Power of the Paw right here on ESPN3. Dunstan, Kalathis, wide open. Missing that three, Griffin rebounds, here's Warren. In transition, Capers lays it in. Nobody got back to protect the rim, and Nick Kalathis is still upset as he runs by us at the shot he missed. James on the fly and puts it in. Four points for James, and we're tied at 36. And Warren thought about the three. Griffin will take the three, and that one's off the lip. And Kyle Hines rips away the rebound. Here's Kalathis. Nice bounce pass to Dunstan. He finds James, open three, no. Lecheski with the offensive rebound as he sneaks in there. Keeps the possession alive for Team Hines. Had a mismatch. Kalaitis open again. Griffin the rebound. Capers inside of Kuhn Purcell on the lay-in. <laughs> they ran out of defenders. There was two in there, but on the third pass, Florida TNT had nobody left to defend him later in. 
We've had seven ties, eight lead changes in this game. The one seed versus five seed matchup. Hines inside, scoring. What a great pass by Mike James. That's eight points for Kyle Hines. Here's Warren on the floater, and it goes in. Back and forth we go. Each team making great shots. Here's Lajeski in rhythm, a three. It's his third three of the game. He has 11 points. And Team Hines reclaims the lead by one. Warren's three. Can't answer. Fight for the rebound. Hines has it for Team Hines. Jump ball. The possession arrow stays with Florida TNT. Matt Lajeski is not a good shooter. Matt Lajeski is a maker. Perfect in rhythm, perfect footwork. Nothing but the bottom. He was a late acquisition to Team Hines, but a good addition at that. Five threes yesterday, four threes. They're making a three threes so far here tonight. Akun Purcell, a tough shot with Dorsey in his face, and he still knocks it down. Akun Purcell's got some serious skills. Shot clock turned off, down to 15 seconds to go in the second quarter. Team Hines, the number one seed, down by one. James here with six. James on the fly, dunks it in! Down. Oh, what an end of the half for Team Hines. This has been a great first half, eight ties, 11 lead changes, and that last lead change at the hands of Mike James. Unbelievable offense, spreading it out. Mike James, get out of the way. I'm going to end it with some dunkability. Hines up by one. My name is Minor De Leon. I am a little over 700 pounds. I know I need to make a change because if I don't, my weight, it's going to kill me. Depression, anxiety, like everything around you. Like you can't enjoy life. Like I couldn't go out. No, it just feels good to be here. I just decided that I want to fight for it. Don't get me wrong. Is it hard? Oh yeah, it's hard. I can just get my rhythm but now. People look at me and they're like, Zazie, like what does he do? Little do they know, I'll probably go to the gym and I'll match him any day. I've lost 200 pounds and I got 300 to go, so it's go time for me. I want to do everything that I couldn't do when I was 700 pounds. I already gave the world the worst of me, so now it's like I got to give the world the best of me. Back here in Greensboro, North Carolina, side of the Greensboro Regional. Brock Bowling and Nate Ross with you. Halftime score as Team Hines leads Florida TNT 43-42 at the break. And welcome back, everyone. Brock Bowling, Nate Ross with you. And Nate, wow, uh, back and forth first half. Each team had the lead several times. A lot of ties in this game. A lot of good plays by both teams. It's been fun to watch. First quarter a little slow. Second quarter amazing. The pace picked up. The scoring picked up. Matt Lejeski hit big time threes. And Chris Warren did what he did yesterday. And keep making baskets. Those two lead their respective teams. Well, that's what's going on right now here in the Greensboro Regional. Let's take a look at some of the other regionals in the TBT. And, Nate, we start with the Columbus Regional. Well, I got a chance to watch. Red Scare earlier today when we were still in the hotel. Great crowd, a tip dunk to win that basketball game. Puts him in the finals against Carmen's crew. That's going to be a good one um, in Columbus. And another regional, we'll take a look at the Lexington Regional. Well, you can see in the Lexington Regional, the Lexington team, Bluegrass boys did not advance. That's a surprise. Loyalty is love. you got to love that name. Um, in the championship, and we will see if they play Fort Wayne champs or the D2. D2, the seventh seed in the semifinals. That's an upset. They beat Bluegrass boys. They get in the finals. That'll be special. And the last remaining regional, we'll take a look at the Memphis regional. Huge upset yesterday in the one versus eight game. Yeah, number one goes down quick uh, for Jackson, Tennessee against the Southern Gentlemen. And then in the bottom half, uh, Bluff City, that's the Memphis alums against Louisiana United. That should be really two good games. Uh, we don't know who's going to uh, get in there for the finals, but we will find out tomorrow. 
All right, your halftime score here in Greensboro. It's Team Hines 43, Florida TNT 42. The last basket of the half scored by Mike James on the dunk. Wow, we did it. We built the fastest network for the latest iPhone. And the iPhone 10R with a retina display that makes everything look incredible. It's like the perfect couple. You know the ones who look great in every picture? Like the ones who always make me feel like a before photo. Zoe, Zoe and, and Chris. Chris. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, Zoe and Chris. <laughs> How fun is that? Yeah. AT&T has the fastest network for the latest iPhone. Get the mind-blowing iPhone 10R on us when you buy the latest iPhone. AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Back at Greensboro, halftime score in second round action. It's one seed Team Hines leading five seed Florida TNT 43-42 at the break. And welcome back, everyone. Brock Bowling, Nate Ross with you. And uh, Nate, your take on the first half so far. Well, like we said, the first quarter was not good. The second quarter was, ex was exceptional. I think they got to worry about CP, excuse me, Team Hines has to worry about Chris Warren. They got in his face, but he's so quick. He's going to get his points. Just let, don't let him get 100 points in the half. And I think they're going to talk about that a lot, or they did at halftime. For Team Hines, uh, shooting the ball red hot again for the second straight game is Matt Lejeski. Yeah, four for four from the field. You can see that's his only shot inside the arc. The rest of them were outside the arc. He makes himself available, and everybody knows he's such a good shooter with a white shirt on. They're going to get him the rock. Kalathis has gotten to him a couple times. But his footwork is so good that when he gets his feet set, he rarely misses. And if he does miss, it's not by much. Let's take a look at the first half stats with these two teams. Uh, pretty evenly shooting performances by these two teams from the field. Each team has made 15 shots. Florida TNT's taken a ton of threes, only made six. Team Hines making the free throws, and Team Hines, Nate, plus nine on the boards, and Florida TNT has only a, should be flip-flops. Florida TNT only has two turnovers. Team Hines has nine. Well, the reason the rebound margin is what it is is look how many threes were missed by Florida TNT. And on the other side, all the rebounds were gotten by the team um, on defense. So that young man right there, Kalathis, is really upset. He hadn't made enough shots for his mind, but he's really good with the assists. So just keep doing what you're doing, you'll be fine. There's head coach Iron Rainey, the head man for Florida TNT. Nate, this gentleman at age 13 played for a professional tour team in Europe. And then he went to high school, played basketball at one of the more well-known basketball programs in the country, not too far from here, one state north of us at Oak Hill Academy up in Virginia. Mouth of Wilson, Virginia. Been there many times. And the alley you blob to begin the third quarter and the tap in by Dunstan. Obviously called from the bench. Great call. Everybody's ready for it except the guys in the red shirts. They got beat with a tip layup. Griffin off the mark on that three. Fight for the rebound to Cooper Sell. Tight ropes the baseline. Still loose. Got it back. Got it blocked by Lejeski to James. Up ahead to Dunstan for the jam. Whatever. Team Hines eats for a pregame meal, they should change it because they've not been good in the first quarter, but they've been good in every one after that. Selby with a tough shot, then banks it through. That's Selby's first two points of the game. I like Kalathis. I said it at the point because he's such a good passer. He initiates the offense. Talk to head coach, uh, correction, general manager, Mo Smith of Team Hines before the game. And as James scores on the layup and one, and he told me he feels that Team Hines can really make a run and perhaps win this whole thing. Mike James has the matchup he wants, has the big man on him. Griffin, and he just blows right by him, lays it in, chance for the and one. Professional basketball is so much about matchups for two reasons. One, you know you have an advantage. Two, you know you have quicker players. And Mike James took advantage of it right there. Selby, inside position, Holton, he got banged and fouled. And he'll head of the line for two shots. This is Team Hines' largest lead of the game. Great deep post up there by Jonathan Holton. Just held off the defender until he fouled him. It's amazing to me. I, I've seen a lot of these guys obviously playing in college. I did their games. How much better they become afterwards um, because they realize, obviously, they're getting paid to do it. 
wherever they are. But they just work on their craft a lot more, and this is their business. And I believe a lane violation on Team Hines, so Jonathan Holton gets a mulligan. There is Juan Dixon, head coach of Team Hines. As Nate mentioned at the first half, he's currently the head coach entering his third season as the head man at Coppin State's basketball program. So a mulligan for Holton, his fourth point of the game. Team Hines' lead is down to three. James got fouled by Warren. Well, Mike James thinks he can take Warren every chance he has, and he's been pretty good at doing it. You get Chris Warren in foul trouble, but you got a better chance of beating Florida TNT. Majeski, quick shoot three, and he is fouled by Holton again. That's Holton's fourth. Jonathan Holton didn't think Matt Lejeski was going to shoot it from that deep. He did, and he popped him. So Matt Lejeski at the line. He had 25 points yesterday in the win over Boo Williams, including five three-pointers. He has 11 points so far on four of four. Shooting from a three-point range. No, driving nuts. He's such a good shooter, and he missed a free throw. It's just very frustrating. I should say three of three from three-point range. He has 11 points. It's point number 12. Played two years at Eastern Washington. Two years after that at the University of Hawaii. Not a bad place to play college athletics. Of course, you're indoors, but still after practice. So far, Team Hines has scored on every possession in this third quarter. Florida TNT, TNT trying to answer. They're on this end, down five points. Palmer missed badly off the glass. Rebound, Team Hines. You can see the game players not give Chris Warren a look from behind that line. No matter who's guarding him, just get in his face. If he goes by you, we'll deal with it. Lido's three. Well short. Fight for the rebound. Griffin has it over to Selby. Selby on the drive, tough shot, and banks it in. It's his second basket of the game, his fourth point, and a turnover on Team Hines. Goes back over to Florida, TNT. <laughs> Juan Dixon tried to keep it in bounds by just slapping it back, but unfortunately, Coach Dixon coaches the first part. You can't do that anymore. Probably could, just not legal. Warren, a deep three, book it. That's his fourth three of the game, his first of this quarter. He has 16 points, just like that. We're tied at 51. He just surprised Mike James. Mike James was ready to guard him, and he was going to shoot it from that far out. And Kalepas fouled on the way to the goal. Chris Warren crosses half court. You better guard him. You can see that the hash mark is to his right. He's beyond that. Heck, that's six, seven feet behind the three-point line, but for him, that's nothing. You got to guard him when he crosses half court. It's just that simple. Here's Kalathis. He has three points. It's a good thing for Nikolai to see it go through the net. It's like making a three-foot putt. It just it helps your confidence, makes you relax, and know you know you can put it in the basket. Kalathis was in the running for EuroLeague MVP this last season. He's a 6'5 point guard that led the EuroLeague in assists. And there's a nice basket by Josh Selby, his third of the quarter. He has six points. Wow. That was really athletic. Kalathis a three. That one rims out. Well, that's why he took it. He just made two free throws. He figures, I feel good. It just couldn't make it come to the bottom. This young man can. Selby in traffic and a tie up, jump ball. The possession arrow stays with Florida TNT. Selby had two points in 22 minutes yesterday. Six points in this quarter alone for all of his points so far in this game. Starting to warm it up. A Coon Purcell to turn around. Dunstan clears the rebound for Team Hines.
No, you can't give him an opening like that. Kalathis gives up the three inside. Lejeski. Seven assists yesterday. Kalathis has five assists so far today. 15 points for Lejeski. Here's Warren. Oh, nifty move. Can't finish. Rebound Lejeski for Team Hines. And Mike James on the baseline on the other end. A little shaken up. Kalathis goes down the middle. Watch his eyes. Completely looking the other way, but he knew he had his teammate Lejeski underneath. The defense watches his eyes. Lejeski did not. Really good pass. He makes a couple shots. He's gonna, they're going to run away with this game. He just can't make a shot. Team Hines by two. And led by one at the intermission. Kalathis flips the pass up the top and is taken away by Griffin. Down the lane he goes and lays it in. Every pass isn't good by Nick Kalath. It's just most of them. Lido inside pass to Dunstan for the jam. For a team that doesn't play a lot of games together, they really know where their teammates are going to be. I mean, they're fun to watch. Griffin again, two-hand flush. That's his 11th point of the game, and we're tied again at 57. Out of you, Blob, Kalathis to Dunstan, and can't gather himself. Ball knocked away. Out of bounds to Team Hines. Tied at 57. That's our 12th tie of the game. Come on, we're in semifinals. It's supposed to be like that. James against Warren. Off the glass. A really good job of reverse pivot by Mike James and put Chris Warren on his butt, and he had a layup. Peppers missing the turnaround. Kalathis the rebound. Dunstan floats it in. I like that. There's a dozen points in the game. Good time out there by um, Team Hines. They took a four point lead, and let's get a little bit of a blow. Timeout taken by Team Hines with 4.05 to go into third quarter, and the number one seed leads it by four. Wow, we did it. We built the fastest network for the latest iPhone. And the iPhone 10R with a retina display that makes everything look incredible. It's like the perfect couple. You know the ones who look great in every picture? Like the ones who always make me feel like a before photo. Zoe, Zoe and, and Chris. Chris. Hey, hey, guys. guys. Hey, Zoe and Chris. Right. How fun is that? Yeah. AT&T has the fastest network for the latest iPhone. Get the mind-blowing iPhone XR on us when you buy the latest iPhone. AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. The basketball tournament is brought to you by Puma. Take a look at the Greensboro bracket here at the regional in Greensboro, North Carolina. Right now, Team Hines playing Florida TNT. Later on tonight, our second round game is three seed Power of the Paw against two seed Team CP3. All the action right here on ESPN3. Akun Purcell, tough shot, and gets the roll. his 11th point of the game and Florida TNT now within two. Big time size advantage for Kalathis right here. Kalathis, little quick turnaround goes in. That's 38 of the last 63 points. That's 60% of Team Hines points in the paint. 60%. Warren tries to answer and he does. 18 points for Warren. Clayton's well, going to do it again if he's got Warren on him. He needs, Warren needs some help guarding him. Clearing out the right side. White takes the three, steps inside, and knocks it down. Everybody stared at Nick Clayton's with the ball. They forgot about White, except Nick Clayton's didn't forget about him. Peppers goes to the fadeaway. James the rebound for Team Hines. And the 
Lob inside, knocked away. Turnover on Team Hines, number 12 in the game. Here's Akun Purcell against Kalathis. Finds Selby, open three, got it! All nine of his points coming here in the third quarter. That's his first tray, and Florida TNT cuts it down to one. Kalathis, no. Hines missing the tap try for Team Hines. Here comes Akun Purcell for Florida TNT, and he's fouled on the floor by Aaron White. No shots, take it out of bounds. You know, we're reaching a point in the game, Brock, end of the third, beginning of the fourth, where you can't worry about a mistake. You just got to keep playing. Because one mistake's not going to make a difference. We're in such a close game with so much time left. You just got to play through the mistakes. Get on to the next play. Akun Purcell cranks up the three. And Kyle Hines, the rebound for Team Hines. Here's James. Step back three. Book it. It's over a much bigger Akun Purcell defending that shot, too. That's really good execution to create some space between you and the defender. That's 13 points for James. Selby, another rhythm three, rims in and out for him. Holton the rebound and puts it in. Lido's three, that's way off the mark. With nobody underneath except White who is out of position. Not a great decision. Akun Purcell missing the floater. Ball out of bounds off of Team Hines. You know, Team Hines has 12 turnovers. Florida TNT has just two. And there is uh, Chris Paul, the head coach of Team CP3. We'll see his game next year on ESPN3 as the two seed Team CP3 takes on the three seed power of the paw. The hero for Team CP3 last night right there in the white shirt, PJ Hairston, knocking down a dramatic three pointer to end the Elam ending last night. Griffin. Won't go down for him. The rebound by Team Hines. Kalathis whips it over to White for three. Yes. Seven assists yesterday for Mr. Kalathis. How about eight today? And a minute to go here in the third quarter. Team Hines has made eight of its last ten field goal attempts. Griffin and Hines were battling for post position, and Kyle Hines wouldn't let him get it deep in the post. He had to catch it outside, and then they called a foul on Kyle Hines as he tried to slap the ball loose. Selby against Kalathis. He'll rise and fire a three. Out of bounds to Team Hines. You know, Nate, Team Hines has 12 turnovers in this game. Florida TNT has just two. Florida TNT has 20 points off turnovers, yet still trails by five points. Yeah, they've taken advantage of the situation. Just had the situation hasn't come up enough for them. Pump fake by Lejewski. His shot is blocked, but he's fouled. He'll head to the line for three. And Team Hines has no points off turnovers off of Florida TNT. Then again, they've only forced two. I hope Coach Bobby Knight's watching this game because he would love Matt Lejewski with the shot fake. Yeah. Not only one guy went up, but two guys went up. And then he got some space, and then they fouled him. That's like a double whammy defensively, but Lejewski at the line for three. Great shot fake. All you got to do is get somebody to straighten their legs. They got two guys to jump up in the air. First free throw goes in. You know you're a great shooter when you're upset that you made the free throw, but it hit the front rim. He doesn't want it to hit anything. He was mad that it hit the rim. He's mad again. The guy over there in the black shirt with the gray sleeves isn't mad. Juan Dixon, he'll take the points anyway you can get him. You know, J.J. Redick of Duke used to get mad at himself all the time if his free throw wasn't a swish. Well, that's what you try to do. Like Lou Trevino used to switch. say, why do people get upset when I make a hole in one? He said, that's what I was aiming at. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
the largest lead of the game for Team Hines. Up eight, shot clock turned off, 15 seconds to go in the quarter. They've shut Chris Warren down a little bit, but they've made shots at their end effectively. Warren down to six, Selby back to Warren, three to shoot, steal by Lejeski, has to put it up from half court, but if it goes, no, it does not go. Oh, 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 almost. Good job, they did not let Chris Warren get a look. And they stopped TNT defensively on that one. Team Hines with a 6-0 run to end the third quarter. It has its biggest lead of the game of 8, 74-66. Fourth quarter coming up on ESPN3. Wow, we did it. We built the fastest network for the latest iPhone. And the iPhone XR with a retina display that makes everything look incredible. It's like the perfect couple. You know the ones who look great in every picture? Like the ones who always make me feel like a before photo. Zoe, Zoe and, and Chris. Chris. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Zoe and Chris. Right. How fun is that? Yeah. AT&T has the fastest network for the latest iPhone. Get the mind-blowing iPhone XR on us when you buy the latest iPhone. AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Last night here in Greensboro, Team CP3 with a dramatic win. P.J. Hairston to end the game. The game-winning three-point shot during the Elam ending. Hits the target score first. And P.J. Hairston and Team CP3, the two-seed, pencil their way into tonight's game. There's head coach Chris Paul of Team CP3. His team takes on Power of the Paw coming up after this one at about 7 p.m. Eastern right here on ESPN3. They rushed the court last night. Fans of all ages rushed the court to go congratulate P.J. Hairston after that shot last night. Kind of got scary for both of us here, partner, last night. Uh, they were <laughs> in close quarters to us. <laughs> There's about a foot, maybe 16 inches gap between the table, and there was a lot of humans getting through that little gap. <laughs> Chris Warren with the foul right there. Chris Warren had 13 points at halftime. He had five in the third quarter. They are making or, or trying to make it a point to not give him an open look. Kalathis, he's guarding Kalathis. Kalathis has a size advantage on him and is taking advantage of it by driving and then dishing or driving and scoring. Kalathis just backs his way in, can't finish. Hines once, twice, no! And Warren saves it for Florida TNT. Here's Selby. Good look by Team Hines there. Selby to Griffin. Fouled by Kyle Hines. So here's a breakdown of the team shares. If Team Hines wins this year's TBT, there's who receives what compensation-wise. Their winnings will be sent with Zell. Devon Akun Purcell with the basket. He has 13 points. Kyle Hines, big man, but Purcell went up over and put that one back in. James, tough turnaround goes down for Mike James. He's taking advantage of Chris Warren on defense. Mike James, leading scorer in EuroLeague basketball this past season, the leading scorer. It's pretty impressive. He's a legend over there. This is a Team Hines club with a lot of talented players on the team. General manager Mo Smith told me that it's a deep team with a deep bench, lots of experience, and he says he likes the fact that there are so many guys on his team that he feels can play, not just in the EuroLeague, but also in the NBA. Mike James signed a three-year deal in Greece. About $5 million. Not bad. Greece, Italy, Spain, that's the big money overseas. Israel as well. And Bryant Dunstan comes into the game for Team Hines. Bryant Dunstan, he's the nephew of former Chicago Cubs standout shortstop Shawan Dunstan. Who had one of the strongest arms that I've ever seen at the shortstop spot in Major League Baseball. 
Selby against Dunstan. Skip pass. Holton's three. Blocked by White. Holton got it back. Plenty of time. No time to panic. Capers. No. Well short. Holton the rebound. Yes. Jonathan Holton does a really good job of just sticking his butt in that lane and getting offensive boards. Lead is down to five for Team Hines. James left-handed, no, off the glass. Capers the rebound. Ahead of the pack is Akun Purcell. He'll drive in for the jam. Here comes the TNT. That fuse is going down on possession game. The five seed, Florida TNT in red, closes it down to a three-point game. Here's Kalathis inside, score the basket, and one. Oh, my goodness, how did he lay it in? Clint Purcell on him, no more. Chris Warren on him. Just throws it up with the left hand. I'm wanting the call, got the call, got the bucket as well. Had only three points in last night's win against Boo Williams. Has eight points in this game. Six after the halftime break. Working on a double-double. Nine points, nine assists. An unusual double-double, but one nonetheless. Coon Purcell trying to get a read on the defense. He's picked up by James. James picks his pocket. Two on one break. James all the way for the lay-in. Hey, James says, you're not going to cross over on me. Stuck his hand in there and just picked his pocket. That's only the fourth turnover on Florida TNT. Mike James makes TNT pay for it. Selby, tough fadeaway goes down. All 11 of his points coming since the halftime intermission. Two possession games, six minutes to go, but about two minutes to go until we start the Elam ending. Here's Lejeski wide open to the corner for three. And Akun Purcell, the rebound for Florida TNT. Selby, tough pass to Capers. Back to Selby, Akun Purcell. Rims out that three, and Kalathis the rebound. Kalathis starts a break. You better foul him because he's going to make something good happen at the other end. Fouls on Capers, and that's his third. Team foul number three as well. I talked to general manager Mo Hines before the game. He feels like this number one seeded team, Team Hines, can not only make a good run, but possibly even win the whole thing in the TBT. As Lido is fouled. But he said his biggest concern is he just hopes his team doesn't beat itself. I was watching it, the early game today, and Dan Dockich was the analyst. And he called out Team Hines and said, they quite possibly are the most talented team in the entire tournament during his game, he said. So uh, that's pretty good praise from Coach Dockage. Timeout taken by Florida TNT. And we're going to listen in on the Florida TNT huddle. Very interesting. They're talking about the four minutes, the four minutes, the four minutes. They know it's coming with the Elam ending. Coach Rainey had a great point. We got a buck of down on defense because he knows if he's five, six, whatever, seven down, when it comes to Elam ending time, it's a much tougher task to win the basketball game. So he said when they're going one-on-one, -on -one, we got a buck of down on defense. Don't get beat. And if somebody gets beat, help them out. So you've seen four Elam endings so far in this tournament. Number five comes up here in a couple of minutes. 
in your opinion, what's a manageable deficit for the team trailing going into the Elam Index? Manageable, two possessions at most. Four points, okay. five points, six would be tougher, but that's still two possessions. Because when, if you have the ball, obviously you get to cut that to one possession the first time. But more than that, it's not um, impossible, but it's so much tougher. 0 for 2. At the line is Ricky Lito. We're going to find out about about minute 15 seconds. And a foul away from the ball on Mike James. And he's got the task of Chris Warren right now. Selby, nice spin move. Got stripped of the ball. It's out of bounds off of Selby. Spins and just, yeah, him and Nate, good, good, good job, good call. And Mike James goes to the rack, gets fouled. He'll head to the line for two shots. By my unofficial count, they worried about Chris Warren. He has not scored in the third quarter. Excuse me, he has not scored in the fourth quarter. He scored five in the third. He's got a total of 18, had 13 at halftime. Take, take, another a, another look. take another look, Nate. Yeah, it's off Hines. Yeah, it hit him in the knee and then hit Selby's knee and then, I believe you are correct, sir, went off of uh, Dunstan's leg like a pinball. It was quick. Who's got Chris Warren? That's the key. Eight point advantage for Team Hines. Well, you can see they're making him go left. That was quite evident right there. They're not going to let Chris Warren get to that right hand. And they foul Eric Griffith. Calathus knew Griffith's much bigger, much stronger on the block. He can hurt you. Foul him. You got one more to give, and then they put them in the bonus. Warren rises and fires in a three. That's his spot. That's where he won the game from, exact same place. Five threes for Warren. He has 21 points. It's down to a five-point game. And the Elam ending starting in about 30 seconds. Good job by Dunson to save that one because Mike James lost it. Offensive foul called on Team Hines on Brian Dunston. Illegal screen. Not stationary. 4.30 to go. It's a five-point advantage for Team Hines. TNT with the ball. Really big possession here for TNT because of the time on the clock. It's going to be Elam time in a couple seconds. Warren banks it in. Can't let him get to that right hand. They did it last time exceptionally well. That time they let him go right. He burned him. It's a one-possession game, and we're approaching four minutes. Lido. Inadvertent whistle. Okay. I think Team Hines is telling the officials when we score, if we score, we're going to call a timeout to get to the Elam ending, and they thought he had a layup, and he blew it too soon. And he's going to call. So timeout taken by... Nick Kalathis and Team Hines as we're under four minutes. They're going to set up the Elam ending. Game clock is shut off. Shot clock still in effect. They'll add eight points to Team Hines' score. And that will be the... That will be the target score. First team to reach 91 points wins this one. Wow, we did it. We built the fastest network for the latest iPhone. And the iPhone XR with a retina display that makes everything look incredible. It's like the perfect couple. You know the ones who look great in every picture? Like the ones who always make me feel like a before photo. Zoe, Zoe and, and Chris. Chris. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Zoe and Chris. <laughs> How fun is that? Yeah. AT&T has the fastest network for the latest iPhone. Get the mind-blowing iPhone XR on us when you buy the latest iPhone. AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Time now for the Elam ending. The way this works, first dead ball, under four minutes to go in the game. The game clock is shut off. The shot clock is still in effect. They add 
eight points to the leading team's score to set the target score. And right now the leading team score is 83 for Team Hines. They add eight to it to set the target score. 91 is the target score. First team to reach 91 points in this one. Wins the game and plays again tomorrow afternoon. One possession game. And James, a deep three. That's well short. White offensive rebound. And a new possession for Team Hines. Shot clock reset to 20. Smart to kick it back out to get the set you want. White fouled, missed the shot. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, you got to be aggressive because you're in the bonus, whether they call that a shot or not. It's, it's going to be two free throws, and you only need eight more. So it's the Elam ending. The idea came from Nick Elam, the founder of the Elam ending. He's a middle school principal in Ohio, a diehard basketball fan. He's done extensive studies of games and teams who are trailing that deliberately foul late in the game to try and stop the clock, put the other team on the free throw line, hope they miss the free throws, get the ball back, try and score, and repeat the process. And Elam's studies have shown over the last several years that teams only come back to either force overtime or win the game with that strategy at a rate of only 1.5% of the time. So therefore, came up with this Elam ending idea. And I think it's a good idea. I love it. Shelby, tough fadeaway. And Lito rips away the rebound for Team Hines. Last four minutes of a normal college game takes 13 minutes and 18 seconds. With the Elam ending, it takes a little over six minutes. Lido lays it in. Seven points for Lido. Team Hines, six points away from the win. Here's Warren on the attack. Floater, no. Fight for the rebound. Hines keeps it alive and takes it away. And Lido, making a James rather, is fouled underneath. And you might want to recap, Nate, the FIBA rules in effect that normally would have been goaltending, but not in this tournament. That's just what I was thinking. If you're not familiar with the rules, that ball was on the rim. After it hits the rim, in this country, you can't touch it. FIBA rules, you can. And White gets a hand on it, keeps it alive, and that is completely legal under the rules of TBT. So timeout, Florida TNT. And Aaron White plays overseas, so he's used to it. That's why he did it, and it worked for his team, and they got the ball back. Depending on the situation you're in, and obviously Florida TNT is down, it's a whole different mentality. It's all about defense if you're down. Yeah, you want to score points, but if the other team scores, you're in big trouble. On the other hand, if you're ahead in this Elam ending situation like uh, Team High, just to keep attacking the basket. So Mike James, 17 points yesterday in the win against Boo Williams, 19 points so far in this one, and still stuck on 19. That's the third consecutive miss at the line by Team Hines. One out of two. Team Hines five points away from the win. Florida TNT needs 11. Trying to keep it in his left hand. A forced shot, missed badly by Warren, and it's out of hand. He thought the call was coming, but they will not let him get to his right hand. Yes, he gets to it occasionally. But if they make him go left, he's far less effective. Alley oop lob inside Dunstan. Can't finish. Fight for the rebound. Foul on Dunstan. He fouled Selby. And Selby will go down to the other end to shoot two. I don't think Brian Dunstan realized Chris Warren was guarding him. Just catching go up quick. He waited. Defense got a little help, didn't make the shot. Chris Warren is the target on both ends of the floor for Team Hines right now. 
Don't let him go to his right hand and attack whoever he is guarding. Here's Josh Selby, played one year at Kansas, 2010-11 season, drafted in the second round, pick number 49 overall by the Memphis Grizzlies in 2011. Spent two years with the Grizzlies franchise. He has all 12 of his points in this game coming after the halftime break. Kyle Hines back in, white out. They're going for the power inside to try to seal the deal here. One out of two. Normally a good free throw shooter. Makes one, misses one. Five point game, Team Hines five points away from the win. James driving all the way and lays it in. Oh, beautiful teardrop layup by James. Well, Eric Griffin went up the block, and he just took the elevator up a couple more floors. Oh, that was dangerous. And a collision at midcourt. Watch James come down the middle. Eric Griffin's there to block it. Ah, let me go up a little higher. <laughs> really good adjustment in midair for the EuroLeague's leading scorer of last season. Mike James. So Team Hines just three points away from the win. Eric Griffin at the line for Florida TNT. He has 11 points. As someone who's never gotten up in the air as high as Mike James did right there, it's really hard <laughs> to do what he just did. Not only jump that high, but to readjust when you're in the air. But I can appreciate it. Florida TNT coming off a 71-68 win over the primetime players yesterday in the opening round game. Good move by Juan Dixon right here. He needs three to win it, so why not put in the best three-point shooter you have, Matt Lejewski. TNT nine points away. Team Hines only three points away from the win. Jeske says, come my way. I got Chris Warren on me. I can get off a three. Lido, this is for the win. And no. Nice tip. Into James's hands. He'll drive inside for the lay-in. Missed it. Rebound. Griffin. Outlet to Warren. He's ahead of the pack. He'll pull up for three. And missed it short. Lido the rebound. James, he spots up. Puts up a three for the win. And they wave it off. Or it's Got a foul. foul. It's a foul. Is it on the floor? Or is it? Yep, it's on the in the act of shooting. Fouls on Eric Griffin. That's his fourth. And Mike James has a chance for three free throws and a chance to win the game. Shot fake now. Is he in the act of shooting? Yes, he is. He grabbed him on the left arm. Good call. This is how the power of the paw ended its game last night with Gabe DeVoe hitting three free throws to win the game in the Elam ending. There's one. You're the leading scorer in the Euro League, you got to be able to make three in a row. He made one. First two are easy. Third one's a hard one. He's two for two on this trip. If he makes this free throw, the game is over. Third free throw for the win. And he got it. That's your ball game, and number one seed Team Hines hangs on and defeats Florida TNT 91 to 82 to advance to tomorrow afternoon's regional championship game here in the Greensboro region. So Team Hines, the number one seed survives and advances to go to the third round of the TBT. Let's go to the updated bracket as Team Hines, the one seed, moves on to tomorrow's regional championship game. It takes on the winner of our next game on ESPN3, Power of the Paw versus Team CP3. And 
And we're now joined by Nick Kalathis of Team Highs. Nick, congratulations on the win. Uh, in both games yesterday and today, your team, a little bit of a slow start, but a much better finish. How would you assess how you guys have played so far? It looks like, uh, like you said, we're starting off very slow, but then uh, we catch a rhythm. I know a lot of us have uh, taken some time off from the European, so to get uh, some rest. But um, we're looking like we're playing together um, better in the second half, and so hopefully we can keep it going to make a, a full game tomorrow. Your shot's been off, and I've been watching Fair your enough. face. But the assists have not. Seven yesterday, nine today. I told, I was saying during the game, if you just run down the floor, Nick will find you with the basketball. Uh, yes, sir. Um, obviously, like you said, I can't hit a shot. But um, <laughs> for me, as a point guard, is to, to find the guys. And hopefully, I can hit a shot tomorrow and, um, and help the team. Was it talked about in the huddle, it looked like it was, to really worry about Chris Warren? Definitely. Uh, he's one of their key players. Um, he played very well today. Started off very strong. And um, especially in the second half, uh, we wanted to slow him down a little bit, and, and we did that a little bit. Good job. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right. That is Nick Kalathis, one of the stars for Team Hines, as our final score here tonight from Greensboro. Team Hines, 91, Florida TNT, 82. Our next telecast coming up at 7 p.m. It's Power of the Paw against Team CB3. For Nate Ross and our entire crew, I'm Brock Bowling saying so long for now. Thanks for watching the TBT on